Miss Kreiger, you say that your mother's ex-boyfriend, Mr. Dittmer, has denied that you were his daughter for much of the past 34 years due to his anger over paying child support. Now, you and your mother have brought him here to prove that he is your biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Dittmer, you say you accidentally agreed to pay child support for Ms. Krieger, and you claim that you never believed she was your daughter because her mother, Ms. Lee, cheated on you throughout your 12-year relationship. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. I got duped into paying child support, Your Honor. They, um, they sent certified mail to my mother's house, and I wasn't there. I was in Colorado. And when the certified mail came, my stepdad signed it. So they held court without me and found me in default because I wasn't there. Well, anyways, when I came back from Colorado, it was something I was running from the law from. I paid my bond to get out of jail. And after I paid my bond to get out of jail, they said, you ain't going nowhere. The friend of the court has a hold on you. And so I had to pay three more hundred dollars to get out of jail. And when I went and talked to the court clerk, the court clerk told me that by paying the $300 that I admitted guilt and I got stuck paying child support for the rest of Jamie's life. Yes. And you don't believe she's your biological child? I do have my doubts. Your Honor, younger. I have pictures right here that will prove without a doubt. Let me see that evidence, violence. please, Ron. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. These are pictures of... Jamie as a baby. Jamie Mr. as a little Dittmer. girl. Yes. The next picture is... Mr. Dittmer. Mr. Dittmer, and you believe they look exactly alike. Look at him, yeah. How can he deny her? Do you see the similarity? Not really, Your Honor. <laughs> Miss Lee, were you intimate with anyone else? Yes, I was, but at that time, I was not. I was very close to his family. I met him when I was 14, Your Honor. His family was my family. It's okay. Take your time. Everybody, when there's babies born, compare and say how much they look like me on my dad's side of the family also. So how could they look like me if I have a different dad and that's from my dad's side of the family? Your Honor, the older two children have blue eyes and blonde hair. Jamie's always had darker hair with a hazel or brown And you eyes. never claimed them or paid child support on them. Why? Well, because you didn't tag them and you never had me sign any If you were a man and responsible, you would have signed the birth certificate. I didn't want the children in the first place. You was the one that wanted marriage and babies, marriage and babies. Yeah, I did. She I stopped lost. taking the pill and got pregnant, Your Honor, and had the first yes, child. Yes, I did. I and sure did. She tricked me again. I did. She's been tricking me my whole life, I think. My mom's oh. parents died when she was two. Her grandma got sick and passed away and that's how my oldest sister came along. She felt she needed something closer to her, and so she admits to tricking him, but she was also very young. Very, very young. And I bet on my own since I was pregnant. How long did this relationship go on? 12 years, 13 years, I you don't know. You have two older children, yes. but you're denying Jamie, Miss Kreiger. She's the one that looks different than the older children. The older children have blonde hair, blue eyes. Jamie has dark hair, uh, hazel or brown eyes. The older children are more athletic. Well, every child is different. Well, why would she trick me into paying child support like that, Your Honor? I mean, I wasn't even at the hospital when Jamie was born. You most certainly were. No, I wasn't. Oh, my God. No, really? I was not. That upsets you, Miss Lee? You don't, because he doesn't rem lie in Your Honor. No, I'm not. Is he on her birth certificate? No. no, he's not. He took me to the hospital. I don't remember that, Your Honor. What you, you don't remember? I don't recall that. When I was younger, I did do a lot of drinking, but I still don't, still don't recall that. I don't remember her. And why would she trick me into paying child support? Why would she send certified mail to my mother's house when she knows I'm in Colorado? I didn't do it. The, the state courts. did it because I had to get help raising my three kids alone. Well, I just know it happened. Miss Krieger, when did you find out that Mr. Dittmer was denying he was your biological father? Um, in 2007. I stayed with him for a month before I got my place. At first, it was just all of a sudden I was hearing all this, how I wasn't his kid, and I just 
kind of backed off, but I've always been raised with him as my father. Before we moved to Monroe, he used to occasionally come by and visit us outside because he wasn't allowed in the house. Cause my no, Your Honor, had. I fought for two years to get visitation to see these children. I went through referees. I went through mediators. She kept saying that I would kidnap the kids. That they, she'd never see them again. It took me two years to get visitation, then they gave me supervised no, visitation. No, it was your drinking, like you said earlier. Yeah. I wasn't going to let my little children go with you drunk and have you driving with them drunk. So, my kids Mr. Were not Dittmer, safe. if you didn't think Miss Krieger was your biological child, why the visits? Well, Your Honor, it was just doubts because her mother was messing around with another fella about the time that Jamie was conceived. No, I believe I was a couple not, of the fellows. Your Honor. Yes, you were. I had been going to church, Your Honor, with his mother, and I'd I li- had given my life to the Lord, and there that was... is how it happened. Because I went off the pill, I said, "I'm not getting, I'm not having sex again until I'm married." Your he Honor, knew she's... this. He knew I was not on protection. She's acting like a born again virgin or something. That's not true, Your <laughs> Honor. <laughs> If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Tell me what happened. You all were together, but you broke up. She's always slept with other people, Your Honor. There was a couple people that I know for sure. Her best friend, her best friend's folks told me she was messing around with this guy about the time that Jamie was conceived. So yes, she was messing around. That's a lie. No, it's not. Now, this is unfortunate, Miss Krieger, Jamie, that you have to hear any of yeah. this. From yeah. what I hear, my mom's admitted it was, but it was the sister before me, but he doesn't deny her, and he always gripes about how he had to pay child support on me. And that leads you to believe that it's about the money. Yes, that's why it's Your Honor, the child support's been paid. I've got the final payment right here. I'd like to present it to the court. You I'd like to see your... that. So I ended up talking to the attorney for the friend of the court, and I settled with him. They said I owed $13,000 at that time, and he said that only $3,000 was owed in child support, that the rest of it was administrative fees, interest, and surcharges. Yes. And we settled for half of that, and so I paid it off to get it off my back so they'd leave me alone. So you paid the amount of $6,500 yes, ma'am. to settle your child settle. support debt. Yes, ma'am. Because I think, you I had think so many arrears, yep. a $3,000 child support debt had... Well, they kept chasing me down. They wanted to throw me in jail all the time, and they kept threatening me. Every time I'd get a job, they'd want money, you know? They, they hounded me forever. As you can see, that's back in 07 there that I finished paying off. So it's, it's been a while. As far as I'm concerned, I've always treated Jamie like my own, always treated her as my daughter. I go down there, I cut her grass, or whatever she asked me to do. She came to me one time, she wanted a car. I helped her buy a car. She said, Dad, I'll pay you back. She sold the car. I never seen a dime. You know, I mean... So, Miss Krieger, I see when you listen to this, you, you look emotional. Yeah, there's been so many instances that he's helped me some, but he's also griped the whole way through. He told my daughter's dad that I wasn't his, and I had to hear about it, which is pretty embarrassing. I never, no, I never told her. What happened? I told my middle child's dad, you guys were drinking, yes, but still, if you said it, then you feel it, and you shouldn't be telling my fi- people that are my friends and stuff. It's one thing to say it to me. Say it to somebody else, that's just disrespecting, belittling to me, it makes me feel less welcome. I got in a bad car accident, lost my job. I did a lot of struggling. He did help me for a couple years when I had my middle child. I thought for Christmas, maybe I'll get $100, 20 bucks, like I usually get. I give her money every year for Christmas, Your Honor. She comes over to my side of the $20, she just said it. No, more than that, more than that. Well, I mean, the fact is he's giving you something. I mean, because let's be honest, you all are accusing him of being about the money, the fact that he had to pay money for child support. I mean, he's paid the child support. He's even paid it off. The fact that he's even also giving you money on top of that seems to be... He didn't, though, right away. Like, when I was little, I asked I even give her daughter money for Christmas, too, my granddaughter. But isn't this about more than money, really? I mean, how did you feel? Did you feel like 
you were his biological child, or do you feel like he treated you differently? I, I always... I mean, I always did for the longest time, but then as I became an adult, then he's telling me all this. My mom cheated on him, uh, probably his cousins. He's telling me this and that. Wait, wait he said you might be his cousin's child? Yeah, he told me that my mom cheated on him with one of his cousins, and he didn't start doing things for me for Christmas till way later. Like, I found out the gifts that I did receive when I was a child, like, he did pay for it, but it was my grandma motiv was the motivation driving force. Yeah, he wouldn't you know. even file his taxes because he didn't want my mom getting money. He always was griping. He didn't want her having the money. So, beyond money, I feel like that's all we're talking about today. <laughs> Money. Well, Your Honor, money. it's because her mother's greedy. I mean, when Jamie lived with a lady on the next street behind her mother, the child support check went to the next street over and her mother yes. got upset. What I'm trying to get at, Ms. Krieger, beyond the money, I mean, <clears throat> this has had to affect you. And I see the tears in your eyes. It's as if she has so much in her heart to say, but she's almost been, like, brainwashed, hypnotized, programmed. Anything that comes out of her mouth is how much money. Well, and this okay. isn't about money. A child has no clue about money, and they shouldn't. That, that's not what you should be concerned with. Exactly. When you were younger, did you feel like you were treated differently? He never denied my other sisters, but he never paid a dime on them. So that's why it seems like it's kind of money. And then when he did help me, He'd always be griping. Well, I don't even know if I'm yours, but I just gave you 20 bucks to help you buy some diapers. And so it got to the point where, why ask him for help? I mean, he's just got it in the back of his mind. I'm not his kid. It makes me feel worthless and like, it's a lot of emotional abuse and that's what sticks with you and that's what stays. That's what I wanted you to be able to say out loud. And you don't have to feel ashamed to say to two adult people, and you're an adult What's now. What's embarrassing when somebody comes and tells me, oh yeah, your dad said he ain't even your dad. Of course it is. And like, I know he said he's had his doubts, but to go tell other people, and then my daughter's dad at that. I mean, come on. And now I think you've just had a moment to be able to verbalize how that's affected you. When was the first time you ever even got wind of this? Your Honor, that was my fault. I was drinking one time and I was mad because I was paying support and I told Jamie that she may not be my child. How old was she? I think it was around the time he was settling child support because I moved to buy him in 2007. When he said he was drinking and he said he, he, he realizes he shouldn't have said that, but he says, I'm not even your father, I'm not your father. What, what was your response? I was pretty shocked the first time I heard it. Did you ask your mom about it? I think the first person I called was my grandma. <laughs> Which was my mother. She was my rock. She meant a lot to me. And, you know, somebody asked me, well, what if he wasn't your father? Well, my grandma was my everything, you know? And you feel like if he's not your biological father, in a way, you lose the connection you felt like you had with your grandmother. Yes, a lot to deal with. Is an emotional little roller coaster. This is very emotional. This is this is deep seated. You're 34 years old now. Yeah. You know, I, I'm so thankful that you had the courage to come in here today. Because what you've spoken about, it's not easy. You know, this is your day in court. People have their day in court, it's just time to lay it on the line. So I think the only way that we can truly move forward in this moment is to get the results. Are you ready? Yeah. Ron, I'm ready for the results. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Krieger Lee versus Dittmer, when it comes to 34-year-old Jamie Krieger, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Dittmer, you are her father. Oh.
Mr. Tillman, you claim your biological daughter, Annetta Tillman, disappeared out of your life 30 years ago, and you haven't seen her since. Yeah. Now, paternity doubts have led to your petition for a DNA test to prove you are her father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Johnson, you are the reason for those paternity doubts. You also had a sexual relationship with Ms. Tillman's mother at the time of conception and hope today's DNA results prove you are the biological father because you raised her. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Tillman, what was the nature of your relationship with Ms. Tillman's mother? Was it committed? It started out more like friendship, more so than a committed relationship. But as time grew on and I discovered that she was dealing with other people than myself. You know, so that's when I kind of strayed away. So you discovered she was also in a relationship with Mr. Johnson? I didn't necessarily know that they were in a relationship, but I knew that she was dealing with somebody else other than myself. So, Mr. Johnson, you were also in a relationship with the same woman? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. When I met her, she wasn't working. And uh, I was working at a bakery, and so uh, I got her a job there. She didn't have a way to get to work. I drove her to work and then took her back home and stuff. And uh, I, only, I only met Mr. Tillman briefly, one time. It was at a rooming house. I lived at the rooming house. But when I met her, she was, uh, she was at your house then. Well, <laughs> well okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you were having an intimate relationship as well, not just picking her up and dropping her off from work. Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. Did you know about Mr. Tillman? No, I only met him that one time, dropping her off home from work. Do you remember this encounter? He's seen me more than once. Because he's the one that came and told me when uh, CC was in the hospital having Netter. Remember that? So, l let me get to the pregnancy. She what did Miss Tillman's mother tell you about the pregnancy? She came to my apartment one morning after we had been separated, I guess about maybe four, almost five months. When she showed up at my door, she was pregnant, you know. You know, I still a joke, and I asked her, you know, what happened to her? And so she told me she was pregnant, it was mine. Did she also tell you, Mr. Johnson? Uh, all she told me, uh, she was uh, uh, pregnant. And I, I said, was it from, uh, from that guy? And uh, she said, uh, uh, yeah, I believe so. And so she, she told you the baby was not yours? Yeah. And she told you it was the guy, and the guy is Mr. Tillman? Yes, ma'am. All right, yes, and so, Mr. Honor. Tillman, did you believe the child was yours when she told Not you? Not at first, Your Honor. I didn't believe it until I went out to the hospital and actually saw her laying up there in the hospital bed. And from that point on, I was in her life until oh. they, till they sent my daughter away. They sent her away? Yeah, I guess you were CC. Y'all had to send her away, because... Uh, you know what? It, it's like, Yester told me that, uh, you had uh, sex with her that morning, around about sex 12 o'clock. With Cece. And uh, that's I, Miss Tillman, yeah, mother. Yes, that's okay. her mother. And so uh, she told me she had had sex with you that around about 12 o'clock. And I had stopped by there around about uh, uh, three something, and uh, me and her had uh, had sex. I, so, I, I, I don't remember. You so know. wait a minute, Mr. Johnson. Let me let me make sure I understand your testimony. You're saying that Ms. Tillman's mother told you she had had a sexual encounter with Ms. Mr. Tillman earlier, earlier that day. And then you came by and then she, you also had a sexual encounter. Yeah, but so she basically did, she, did she tell, was she, she admitted did. to you she slept with you and Mr. Tillman on, on the, the same, same day. day. And yes, that's Leon. what made you believe that uh, it could be my daughter. And so you submitted a calendar to the court yes. that uh, outlines this. Yeah. So around February yeah. 1983, yeah. you state that Ms. Tillman's mother told you she slept with Mr. Tillman first. Yes. And then when you came by around three, she slept with you as well. Yes. Yeah. And immediately you realize, well, if that was around the time Ms. Tillman was conceived, then I could also be her biological father. Yes. Who came for the birth? I picked up uh, Ms. Ms. Tillman's mother and the baby. And the baby. You picked him up from the hospital. Yes. But you came up to the hospital, Mr. Right. Tillman. Right. After you came and told me CC was in the hospital having... I don't remember telling you. I don't remember oh, telling you. Back. Well, if you brought her home from the hospital 
Who was in her life after that? Did you have a relationship with her? Yeah, because as far as I knew, he was gone. And you... so, Mr. Tillman, did you have a relationship? Did you get yes, to see I the baby? Yes, I did, Your Honor. I you did. I come and get my daughter and take her with me on the weekends and... and anything her, she, and anything she needed, her? I did Where did you for. come and get her Y'all just took my daughter... Where did you come and get her from? Her uh, from CeCe's house. Huh? From C Sent away where? To Georgia, to her dad's house. CeCe came and told Man, me... Man, that was... That was... When she, she, uh... After she was born, yes. All right, she gentlemen, didn't go, she did gentlemen, not go to gentlemen, Georgia after she was born. Let's get some order. I realize that we are discussing Miss Tillman, but I think it would be better if we hear from her. Jerome, would you please escort <laughs> Miss Tillman into the courtroom, please? <laughs> Hello, Miss Tillman. Thank you for being here. Stand over at the podium. Both of these men say that there is possibility that they are your biological father. Who do you think your biological father is? Honestly, George, I have no idea. Um, my whole life, I've had Mr. Tillman's last name, but this is a gentleman I've never met before. You have never, in your recollection, met Mr. Tillman before? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Because he just testified in court that he came to the hospital to see you when you were a baby, used to pick you up when you were a little girl and take you with him to spend weekends because he believed he was your father. Uh, well, the only person I've ever had come pick me up and take me out on the weekends was Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson has always been there for me. Um, so I'm really confused. I don't, I mean, I don't know. And where, I mean... <laughs> Baby, after, after your mother and him sent you to Georgia, I lost but, contact with you. But you know my name? You, I, you, you know my birthday? I came back birthday? several times trying to find you. But what happened? And I don't How know. How you not every, find me? I couldn't find you. Everybody whole, disappeared. And then Johnny, I mean, Mr. Johnson, it's Mr. a possibility that... Johnny and your that mother was full of crap, He right? was full of crap? Yeah. Uh, you said that uh, you used to pick her up... Yes. ...when uh, she was little and yes. take her up from yes. where? Yes, I'm, 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 I'm the one I gave her first birthday party. You couldn't have. I'm the, you, he didn't go to, to Georgia. I don't know after where. Her. I don't know where y'all sent her. You could be your old. I, I, they sent me to Georgia when I was about three years old. So you Hello. did. Okay. 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 So That's now, what Mr. Tillman is testifying to is in fact true. You okay. were sent to Georgia to live. I, I was sent to Georgia to live. When you were growing up, you said Mr. Johnson was always there for you. Yes, ma'am. So. Who did you think Mr. Johnson was exactly? Johnny was my mother's friend, and to me, I grew up knowing him as my godfather. Like, he's always been my father figure in my life. I've never known this man over here. Johnny has always been there for me. So they said it was your godfather? Yes, ma'am. I didn't know that him and my mom and all of them had whatever they had going on on the same time. Like, I had no idea about this. You never knew any of this? No, ma'am. I feel like I've been misled. I've been lied to. I've been cheated out of so much. And I have I'll be too, 32 baby. years old. And I have And too. I've never. All I have is a, a name on a, on a piece of paper. That's and, all I and, have. And how did you get that name? Let's talk about that. that. That's, how, how did I get my name? I signed for you at the hospital after you were born. This is my birth certificate. I have your so original good. birth certificate. And you it doesn't have... So let why, me see why, that. Why, Jerome, why, uh, Jerome why, hand why, me that. Why you left? CeCe got mad at me because she found out I was going to New York to get married, and that's why I think you and her sent my daughter away out of my life. Now, it's not my fault. What do you mean it's not it's your not fault? It's not my you fault. You know my name, you know my birthday, you know everything. There's internet. I look for you. I search uh, for you. Uh, I search for you. Mr. Tillman, you handed me a piece of evidence. I want you to describe this for me. This is... Her birth a birth certificate. certificate. It is Annetta Tillman's birth certificate. Right. The one with the raised seal, her original birth certificate. And listed as mother, Sister Ruth Williams. Right. And then as father, it's blank. It's blank. It's big well, blank. I, I got so your how did you sign? I'm telling well, how you. How did that. you sign my birth certificate and there's no I, name on there? I, at the hospital, I get the, the nurse gave me your birth certificate at the hospital. I was out there for you. Mr. Tillman, you said you came up there. Yeah, and I you came just to testified a moment ago. She was born. And you just testified a and moment ago that you signed. Your name should be on it. Should, it should be I, on there. How did I, well how did I end up with the original birth certificate? I don't know. You can I go you can go you can go in with How did I end up with the last name of a man that I've never Mr. Met. Tillman, I want to understand this. Yes, sure. You said you remember signing it. Putting I your name remember, on it. I remember it. being at the hospital, I remember, and when I left there, I ended up with the birth certificate. Now, how I ended up with it, I can't... It's so much... So, 
No, okay. the reason I wasn't in your life, baby, because they sent you I away. Don't, I don't care about what All they right. did. Well, you I, are I, a grown I, I, man. I, I, you have your own. You I'm should right. have did it. You shouldn't have stopped. You knew I was out there. Did you not what? know I was out there? You yes, knew I knew I you were out there. I tried my best to find you. Your best. Is I'm not. I'm not one of those computer wizards. I'm old school, baby. But I, I mean, gotta this, be computer. You don't have to be I don't, I, don't, I, don't even play, I don't even have an email address. It doesn't I don't matter. There's, well, now there's, I do. There's somebody. Oh, so, Mr. Tillman, on there. Hold on a minute. Mr. Tillman. John, I don't feel like talking to you. Mr. Tillman, no, hold on, yes, hold on. You ain't got to talk. All you got to do is listen. I don't want to listen at you. No, you said that gentlemen, you used to gentlemen, come to her house. Gentlemen, Ultimately, we know that this young woman grew up without, without knowing who her biological right. father is, and we're trying to get down to the bottom of this. Mr. Tillman, you brought a witness. I'd like to hear from her, please. Right. Please stand, ma'am. <laughs> State your name for the court, ma'am. Melissa. <laughs> And you are? I'm his girlfriend. You're his girlfriend? Yes. And what do you know about this, ma'am? I remember one day just sitting there. He brings out her birth certificate, said I ain't seen her in all these years. This man's almost come to tears because he hasn't seen her in over 30 years. They've taken her from him. But I'm saying, what, what I don't get, oh, you, saying, you saying that you, don't, you didn't know where she was. I didn't. But yet, but yet you said that you came and you took I her came, place? But when I came back to Orlando five years later, after I came back, I came back, everybody had to move. I had no idea where anybody was at. Ultimately, I what I want to understand now, Ms. Tillman, as you stand there, what are your hopes for today? I, I want to know. I want to know where he's been. I want to know why he wasn't there. He missed out on so much. I and know, you can man. tell me that you searched, and you can tell me that you searched, but you didn't find me. You didn't find me, so you did not search hard enough. <laughs> I want to have closure. I want to know who I am. There's so much to You're me that's child. missing. It's a whole other side of me child. missing that I don't have. You think I have a missing thing? You think I... The years that it took you growing up, you think I didn't... If you go to Google and just put in Annette Tillman, it pops up. It'll even bring you to my address for years now, so I don't understand. You can't tell me. You probably have more children. You probably, I probably have brothers and Mr. sisters. Mr. Tillman, where they could have looked. What, what are your hopes? Do they even I know? Mean, let, let, I, mean, these... I was just glad to find that she was still alive because I didn't know if she was alive or she was dead. I, you know, so, that's then look how your she hope? feels toward me. That's all like your it was hope? my fault. So, you know so what? Mr. I was, Tillman... If I was you, John, I would just quit. I would just yeah, you stop. Don't know you know me. what I'm saying? You don't, Mr. Know. Tillman, you don't know me very well either. Mr. Tillman, no, address... Mr. Tillman, way. just Gentlemen, address me. Listen to the judge. All right, Judge. I'm sorry, y'all. What are your hopes today? What are you... What are you hoping... Now that I know where she's at, I always, I always want to be a part of her life. I don't intend to lose her again. But, you know, to me, it was stupid in the first place why I had lost contact with her. They knew better than that. All right. You know, they knew better. You could have... Baby, you keep faulting me. Just, you I can't put... wouldn't know. There's no... There's no explanation. All right, baby, there's I'm no sorry. There's no reason. There's what, nothing. What am, what am My mother is a one. There's no reason ladies, why I can't fault gentlemen, you. Gentlemen, we can keep <laughs> arguing about this. Ms. Tillman, I realize how hurt you are. I, I do. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, what are your hopes today? My hopes today <laughs> is that... I am her father. Okay. I'm sorry. But I think it's so time to get the results. Are we ready? Yeah. Well, these results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Tillman versus Johnson, when it comes to 31-year-old Annetta Tillman, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Johnson, you are not her father. Oh, man. The next result, please, Jerome. As it relates to Mr. Tillman, in the case of Tillman versus Johnson, when it comes to 31-year-old Annetta Tillman, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Tillman, you 
are her father. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. It's all right. <laughs> Little baby, I'm sorry, but it was not my fault. No matter how much you're trying to blame me, they took, they you, took away. you away from me. Took Nobody away. took her away yeah, from me. Yes, you did. Away. Yeah, y'all did. Y'all just they didn't my baby give you away. A, nobody an opportunity to contact you. They took you away, <laughs> so he couldn't. They took you away. Miss Pringle, you open this case against Mr. Brown because you say he denies fathering your 18-month-old daughter Tatiana. You state he has acted like she doesn't exist since the day she was born. You want Mr. Brown to step up after today's results? Prove he is the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brown, you claim Miss Pringle is a known cheater who fathered the child in question with another man. You insist there is no way you are her daughter's father and have medical evidence to prove your case. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Pringle, you say Mr. Brown is denying your baby? Yes, Your Honor. Explain. He says that she's not his because I have cheated before and it was just an accident. But I have sat down and I told him that the mistake was a mistake and I haven't done it since then. And I don't think he should put that against her. And so, I can see in your eyes that you feel really badly. Yes. That this mistake is basically costing your daughter the opportunity to have a father in her life. Yes, Your Honor. Can you tell the court what that feels like? I see the tears in your eyes. It hurts really bad. <laughs> because I have to raise her on my own. And no child should go through that. <laughs> Can you look at Mr. Brown and tell him how much this hurts it hurts really bad that you're denying my daughter. <laughs> she looks for you every day, and she, she says daddy every day, but you're nowhere around to help me raise her. She's probably like, where's my daddy? Nobody cares about me but my mother. <laughs> the reason why I feel like that, because the time she was saying like the situation she cheated on me, always a cheater will be a cheater. Mm. So, so you feel traumatized yes. by catching her? Yes. How did you find out she was cheating? She always get anonymous phone calls leaving out the room, instead of sitting there talking to me like if she was talking to a family member. Okay, so take me back to how you cheated. I met someone on a dating site. Mm -hmm. We made out, and that's what happened. So, it was just something casual? Yes. All right. So, take me to the moment you found out you were pregnant or realized you were pregnant. I went to a free clinic, and I took the test, and they said that it was four weeks and three days. Pregnant? Yes. And then you called Mr. Brown? Yes, and I told him I was pregnant. He was happy, and we were together for, like, two months, and we broke up. And so he was happy, yeah. but for two months? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Brown, you were only happy for two months? We didn't have sex at the time, like the conceding time that she got pregnant. But we was, broke, we was broken up. At the conception time, yeah. you didn't have sex then? No. Okay. I don't know where he got his information from, but there's nobody but him. But after he confirmed you were cheating and you admitted to it, then you start getting phone calls where you gotta leave the room. That doesn't feel too good. Do you understand? Yeah. Like, that doesn't... Ap look, okay, let me break this down. After you've been cheated on, all your red flags, all your senses are up. Spidey sense is on overdrive. So, every time you got a call and then you had to leave the room to talk, look, truth be told, even if it was a family member and you had to leave the room and talk, I'd have been like, oh, you can't talk to your family member in front of me? Yeah. You hear that, Jerome? You can't unring That's what that I would have said right? to you. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. That is, something isn't computing, especially after infidelity in a relationship. Yes. Let's talk about the type of relationship Mr. Brown has with Tatiana. 
Were you there when Tatiana was born, Mr. Brown? No. Did you participate at all in any of the doctor's appointments and go? Just one. Just one? Yes. You didn't come to the birth? No. So I guess you didn't sign the birth certificate either. I signed it because I felt like she needed a father because I didn't have a father figure at the time either in my life, so I wanted to give her a feeling like she has a dad to depend on. Did you have doubts when you did that? Yes, but I felt kind of bad because I don't want a child to go through the same thing I went through. All right. There's a lot going on here. Well, this is a first in this courtroom. You say you both have medical evidence that proves your case. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Pringle, you say you have medical evidence that proves Mr. Brown is Tatiana's biological father. And Mr. Brown, you say you have medical evidence that proves there is no way you can be Tatiana's biological yes. father. I want to start with Ms. Pringle. Okay. Can you tell me about your medical evidence that says that Mr. Brown is, in fact, her biological father? Yes, Your Honor. She's lactose intolerant, so is he. And other family members in his family is lactose intolerant. I'm not. And because she has the same hairline as him, and she also does this squat that he does. A like squat? She... Yes, yeah, she does it all the time. What is the squat? Like, when I'm fixing on something, I... Let me see. I could do that. <laughs> Jerome, now, <laughs> if you can do that squat... Which one? Let's do... We, we don't... <laughs> can we do it out here? Let me prove this case here. Oh. Now, Jerome, if you can do this squat... Okay. That would then help Mr. Brown's case that it may not be hereditary. Can you squat? <laughs> <laughs> Let me... Can you do it? Go, go back there, right? Oh. Go right there, go right there. Jerome, <laughs> now, can you... Squat down there like I don't that. Know exactly how oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then. <laughs> <laughs> I got a laugh to keep from crying. It ain't. It's not the same though. It's not the same squat. You got to be even on both legs. Uh oh, Jerome. Oh. <laughs> you got a heavy gu gun belt on. Oh, okay, okay. Your gun belt is holding you back. Okay, okay. <laughs> So, thank you, Jerome, for your demonstration. <laughs> Jerome, I don't even know why we gave the DNA test. We got all the answers. There it is. The baby there squats. It is. Yeah. He squats. Case closed. Uh, <laughs> case closed. Sometimes you gotta laugh to keep from crying, y'all. Okay. So, Mr. Brown, I wanna hear about your medical evidence. My and I want it to be a little bit better than Ms. Pringles. Okay, my medical evidence, I have asthma, and it runs down in the family. My other significant kid has asthma. Your other kid has asthma? Yes. All your... How many other children you have? I have several. How many? I would have had eight. Wait a minute. What? You, you, what do you mean you would have had eight? So Tatiana would have been your eighth kid? Yes. And all your kids have asthma, but Tatiana doesn't? Yes. That's a lie. The other two kids don't look nothing like him. He only denies mine. I'm sorry, I'm still stuck on... Why are you running around here making all these children? No reason. That, that's what that is. That's a significant <laughs> amount of kids. What, what is going on? Don't you have a job? Yes. Can you take care of all these kids? Not really, Your Honor. I know you can't. 27 years old with almost seven, maybe eight kids? That's not good. It's not good for the kids at all. It's not good for them mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. It's just not... It's, it's not smart. I try to tell you men out here. I'm telling you. And the mothers, too. You think these kids don't grow up? When they get about seven, eight, nine, ten? You think they don't know their daddy's raggedy? Or their mother? Well, I mean, you don't think they know that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I've said my piece. 
I know one thing. People always come in here with medical evidence, and I have to check it with the expert. So, I want to hear more about medical evidence relating to asthma and kids being lactose intolerant. Jerome, will you please escort Dr. Jamila Gator into the courtroom? I've got some sure. questions for her. Hello, Dr. Gator. Hello. Thank you so much for being here with us. So, Ms. Pringle has presented in her case that she believes that Mr. Brown is her daughter's biological father because Mr. Brown is lactose intolerant and her daughter is lactose intolerant and there are people in his family who are also lactose intolerant. Okay. Can you explain to the court whether this is something that is passed down? Is it hereditary? How do you become lactose intolerant? Okay, that's a great question, actually. So, when you're lactose intolerant, your body doesn't produce an enzyme called lactase, and lactase is what breaks down the milk. So, actually, lactose intolerance in some ethnicities is very common, but it typically develops starting at age five through adulthood. Your body stops making the enzyme, you can't digest milk anymore. And in the case where it develops where a child is born lactose intolerant, so from the time they're a baby, they can't digest the formula, they can't digest the milk, that is genetically inherited and requires one gene from each parent for that child to be born lactose intolerant. That is really fascinating, because you hear a lot of people talk about that and you don't really know, okay, well, where, where does this come from? Mm -hmm. Okay, understood. Now, I want to go to Mr. Brown's evidence. Mr. Brown says he believes he cannot be Miss Pringle's daughter's biological father because he has seven other children and they all have asthma and he has asthma, mm -hmm. but Tatiana does not have asthma. Is asthma something that you pass down in that way? So that if a child doesn't have it, that's an indicator that the man is not the biological father? So asthma is a bit more tricky. Um, asthma is involved with both genes passed down and the environment, environmental triggers like in pollution and things like that. So if your a parent has asthma, the child is two to three more times likely to develop the asthma but it's not guaranteed because there's so many other factors that go into developing asthma. Very informative, Dr. Gator. I really appreciate that. Uh, I will let you get back to your work. I know you are very busy taking care of patients. Thank you so much. You may be excused. Jerome, will you Thank please you. escort oh, Dr. Yeah. Gator? Okay. What we've determined from the doctor's testimony is none of this is conclusive. So, we are basically right back where we started from, the beginning of this case, where you believe Mr. Brown is the biological father of Tatiana, and Mr. Brown, you believe you are not. Ms. Pringle, I want you to take a moment and look at Mr. Brown. And if, in fact, he is Tatiana's biological father, I want you to take a moment and tell him what you want and what you need from him, because you've been with Tatiana by yourself for 18 months. I want you to help me financially, emotionally, and physically to be there for her and show her what a guy shouldn't do to her when she grows up. You have to be there and teach her all these things. Hmm. All right. I think the only thing left to do is get the results. There you go. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Pringle versus Brown. When it comes to 18-month-old Tatiana Pringle, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Brown, you are the father.
sorry for not being there for my child. I will help you financially so you don't have to worry anymore. I'll be in my daughter's life. That's your beautiful little girl, Mr. Brown. When you look at her and see how beautiful and special and innocent she is, can you imagine a man promising to be there for her and then just leaving her out in the cold? Can you imagine that? No. That's who you've been. That's the thing you can't imagine another man doing to her you've done. And you gotta start making up for that right now. It's important. 